What's going on guys? Welcome to the B-Side for October 2018. I know this is actually coming out in November. It's because the days were weird. I can't help the calendar, but what I can help is telling you all about the sweet albums that came out this month and some of the cool records I got in. You know the drill by now. Stick around. Alright guys, let's waste no time. Some of the records I'm showing you this month are absolutely beautiful musically and visually, but first, I want to talk about the albums. Novo Amor's Birthplace came out, and I'll tell you this much, it's as expected an absolutely beautiful listen. Perhaps a little samey, as some tend to call it, as most of the album has a kind of similar feel to it, but it's beautiful. I mean, like I said, it's kind of a Bon Iver clone if you go for that self-titled Bon Iver album feel, but it's still a great listen. I think Novo Amor is definitely going places. How to Dress Well, The Ante Room. This album really impressed me. Now, he's had some really cool minimal kind of R&B type stuff in the past that I've really enjoyed. This album elevates his sound and takes it in a more experimental direction. Lots of really kind of creepy, strange sounds as he croons these really authentic, genuine, heartfelt, personal lyrics. So it's a very powerful album. It's a very interesting listen. And again, it's as catchy and interesting as anything he's done prior. Definitely worth picking up. I'm actually looking to grab that special double silver disc with the clear 10 inch. I gotta wait for a US distro to carry that though. I don't know if I wanna pay international shipping for that. And then Caro Caro Bonito has put out Time and Place. Unexpected album. I didn't know it was dropping, which is why I didn't talk about it in the A side. But I love Caro Caro Bonito. I did not know what to expect from this album. And I'll tell you this much they went in a completely different direction and nailed it. Their first two albums were definitely in the same vein, had the J pop inspired synthy electronics with Sarah Bonito's vocals over it, mixing Japanese rap with those simplistic, fun, relatable lyrics. But this album definitely took a different direction. They have changed their style while maintaining the integrity of how good they are as musicians. No longer is it this sugary saccharine pop music, it's taking elements of not just shoegaze and dream pop, but actually noise music. There are some jarring sections on the album that were unexpected, but still really enjoyable in the scope of the listen, and it definitely has changed the KKB sound that we've all come to appreciate. But. It's a welcome change. I think as long as they keep evolving, they're gonna stay relevant and stay interesting and stay a band to watch. And congrats to them for signing to Polyvinyl, one of my favorite labels. I did pick up the bundle of all the reissues they did as well as the early bird version of the new album. So excited to get those in. I'll show them off in some way when I get them. And finally, let's talk about Steve Perry Traces. Now Steve Perry, as many of you know, was the lead singer of Journey. One of my favorite bands growing up, still a band that I hold near and dear to my heart. He has not made music in decades, and he has finally released a new solo album called Traces. Now, Steve Perry can no longer sing the way he used to be able to sing. I mean, as you age, you kind of lose those pipes unless you're, I don't know, Mick Jagger? For anyone else, it's difficult to maintain the range that Perry had, especially because he was hailed as one of the greatest singers in history, up there with Freddie Mercury and some of the other iconic singers of their time. That's not to say that his new voice is bad. I actually kind of like it. I like how weathered it is, it sounds like it's been through a lot, and it maintains that throughout the album, and you can still hear glimpses of what it used to be, which is nostalgic and fun for me as a huge Steve Perry fan. Now, the album itself, songwriting, leaves a bit to be desired. A lot of the songs are cheesy love songs, and you know what? I kind of like Journey for their cheese, so I'm okay with it. It's not as catchy as the best Journey songs, but the single No Erasin has been in my head a lot lately, and it's not a terrific song, but it's catchy and it's fun, and I'm totally okay with it existing. I had to pick up the signed bundle because I wanted to have a record that Steve Perry signed. I thought that would be cool. I'll probably never get a chance to meet him and get him to sign something in person. I love him to sign like my Escape album. That would be insane. But I was able to get Traces signed. That's his signature right there. Really excited about that. And this is just an extra jacket, a la the Kendrick Lamar style, where they had the damn record come with the extra autographed jacket. The actual album came separately. Again, another beautiful gatefold. The inside shows, I guess, some of the making of from the studio, whatever it may be. And again, a really nice background, nice thick spine, as you guys know I love. It's a nice kind of yellow and red marbled, kind of like the sun. And the bundle came with some questionable accessories that I could have done without that I'll show you guys right now. You got yourself a Steve Perry slip mat for, you know, the ultimate Steve Perry fan who wants to have Steve Perry always on the table. A little Steve Perry sticker, Steve Perry patch for your jean jacket, some kind of weird medallion, and socks. You got some Steve Perry socks. 
I could have done without all of that, but I had to buy them in order to get the deluxe signed bundle. I did it, Steve. I hope you used that money well. I want to give a quick shout out to the Metaphonics, the complete Fieldworks recording box set I picked up from Temporary Residence Limited. It is a massive, hefty box set, and going through it would take way too much time in this video. I did do a post on my Instagram a couple weeks ago where I kind of laid it all out and showed you what it came with. I definitely recommend you check that out. I'm giving it a shout out because it's absolutely wonderful. The sound quality is great. All of the tracks are super interesting, and the book it comes with is a companion piece to the, the massive project and I haven't read that yet but I look forward to it because every single album tells its own story it's a concept piece and all the musicians that are collaborating on it album leaf alluvium all these people I absolutely love they kill it on every single track they do it's a really beautiful and unique listen unlike anything I've ever heard before so I really liked it I would definitely recommend listening to the fieldworks projects and uh, if you get a chance to pick up the box set super happy with everything about it everything comes in its own gatefold uh, the box is nice. Everything's great. So good job, Temperance and Stuart Hyatt. Told you guys I was excited for this, and I'm gonna show it off. This is a just a plain pink jacket. Uh, pink jacket, pink inner sleeve, no art. What's on the inside? You know if you watch my videos. Pink Floyd animals. And this is not a recent reissue on pink vinyl. No, no. This is from the 70s. This was a promo that was only done. I think there's a version with the normal jacket, and then a version with this kind of pink outer wrap. Uh, but as you know, I mean, pigs are the theme of this album, for the most part, pigs, dogs, and sheep, but mostly pigs. And I think the pink wax looks incredible, it's semi-translucent under light. And I just wanted to own an early colored pressing of one of my favorite albums ever, not just my favorite Pink Floyd album. So this is a really cool relic of, of the 70s and a really cool collectible. The guy said it was near mint, it's a little more VG+, Plus. it's not the quietest pressing I own. If I want to listen to this album and have it sound amazing, I will go to the recent reissue because it sounds exceptional. The remastering was just unbelievable. But this is a cool piece to own. About to shine a light on a new label that I'm also really crushing on. I talked about them in the Polygon of Wanaland video because they did a really cool variant of that. Needle Juice Records just put out Lemon Demon's Spirit Phone. Now, if you don't know who Lemon Demon is, you do. Because he's been around since we were all kids, or I don't know if you're like 80 watching this, so you weren't a kid, you were a full grown adult. But he's been around in most of our lives in some way or another, and I'm gonna tell you what you know him from. His real name is Neil Cicerega. No idea if I pronounced that right. Sounds wrong? I don't know. His first claim to fame was he did the Flash animation for the Ultimate Showdown. Do you guys remember that? Old Godzilla was hopping around Tokyo City like a big playground. It's like one of the earliest Flash videos that ever existed, or at least that was popular. He did that, and then he followed it up with Potter Puppet Pals. Everyone knows that. Dumbledore. And after that, he went even weirder and he did a bunch of mashup stuff under the name Mouth Sounds, and then he did Mouth Silence, and another Mouth One. Basically, he did really crazy mashups where he mashed up All Star by Smash Mouth into like all these different songs in unexpected ways, and they're hilarious, and they're some of my favorite mashup albums ever. But Neil Cicerega has been around forever, and this is one of his more serious projects, albeit still a very nerdy one. Lemon Demon is the alias he did Ultimate Showdown under and this is basically like a synth pop album that he did that's super nerdy super geeky but surprisingly good songwriting i didn't expect it to be more than a joke but i listened to it and first of all the pressing is excellent but the music itself is super catchy it immediately harkens back to like the oingo boingo days of 80s pop music kind of like weird like unexpected sounds but with amazing songwriting and needle juice did it justice with a big gatefold where it says, due to my strong personal convictions, I wish to stress that this record in no way endorses a belief in the occult, which he actually says on one of the tracks at the end to kind of fill it out. A great variant, really cool. This side's really cooler, actually. It's like a white, red, and black splatter on there. So matches all the colors on the cover really nicely, uh, which I always appreciate a good match with the variant. The album, like I said, is great. I actually went back. I was curious if there were any reviews of it. Needle Drop reviewed this album a couple years ago when it came out. He gave it an 8 out of 10, which for someone who's as uh, opinionated as him, that means to say it's probably worth a listen. And um, they, again, did a great job with this release. So congrats, Neil, on an awesome album on vinyl. Let's get mouth sounds on vinyl so I can really get weird. Let's keep the label love going, shall we? I'm about to talk about one of my favorite labels ever and I've talked about them in a handful of b-sides almost all of their releases I've had the pleasure of showing off on this channel and that's because they are all exceptional visually with audio quality that is just unmatched and the presentation of the entire release is magical these guys put so much love into everything they do if you guessed you're right elusive sound elusive sound had two releases recently and both out of the park as always these guys are like 
Ah, they love vinyl, they love music, and they love their fans because every time they come out with something, everyone just raves about everything. Now let's talk about both. First up, we have Glacier New Dark Age. Let's talk about the deluxe visuals at first. So you got some spot foil treatment on the front, really nice, really classy. Of course, a massive gatefold with some of the coolest art and the most beautiful colors. Like this is like this watercolory scene. It just it's it's a very gorgeous way to approach this album that is very dark and brooding and draws you in such interesting sounds. Additionally, it comes with this really nice print that is like it's gold metallic ink on black and it's numbered out of 100. I got the deluxe version. So this is number 63 out of 100. But let's look at the disc. Before we talk about the music at all, also, Another cool addition, they have this little card, more spot foil. Like, they cut no costs, and their releases could probably cost double what they charge, but they decide to be reasonable even though they ship from overseas, so us Americans take a bit of a hit with that overseas shipping, but let me tell you, it's worth it. Unbelievable. As always, they do kind of like a translucent with splatter on the inside, and under light, you guys just have to see what this looks like under light. It is just unbelievable. This is exactly what I want all my records to look like. I want every record I own to be this quality, but they won't be. So that's why I look forward to every Elusive Sound release. This album itself is dark, it's brooding, it's post-rock, it's post-metal, it has elements of drone, it's powerful, it's emotive, and it's something that's a little challenging to listen to at first. But it's definitely good if you're not really heavy into those genres to be an entry point. If you're just getting into post-rock, post-metal, if you want to see what drone's about, this album could be a really good way to kind of sample what those things are without being too off-putting or too challenging to listen to so it's definitely not something you're gonna throw on and have a really nice relaxing time but it's just beautiful to hear these people that are masters of their instruments come up with these incredible songscapes Glacier is great and this isn't even the best release they did the next one is this is my favorite release that elusive sound has done thus far Blankenberg radio gaze <sighs> let's talk about the packaging first so again very simplistic compared to the last release this is very like abstract geometric shapes to make up the art on the inside, we have kind of a more simplistic layout as well, but the music is anything but simplistic. Really love this blue foil. This blue foil on here is just so incredible. It's, uh, I just want to like frame this alone. This is just a basically, uh, it's, it's liner notes, but it's done in a really cool minimal art fashion as this whole album visually, except for the disc is minimal. And the disc itself is again, just stunning. So this is another one where under light, it takes a new shape and form. You have to see what this looks like under light because it is just the way that these colors emerge. Like it's like, it's almost like it changes completely in what the visual design is for the disc. This is a double disc 45 RPM pressing. So it sounds exceptional and it looks exceptional. And the music itself, let's talk about it. This is unlike a lot of the stuff Elusive Sound has done. Um, this is a little more on the dream pop kind of shoegaze aspect of their music as opposed to the kind of heavier post-rock droney metal stuff they tend to do. I love dream pop and shoegaze. You can hear influences of Pink Shiny Ultra Blast, of My Bloody Valentine, things like that. The, and, but a little more ethereal. Uh, I would say the vocals on this album are really heavenly, they're transcendent. And the first couple tracks are really nice, but then it just really kind of like picks up. And I think the album ends stronger than it begins, which for an album, I love that aspect. These guys did an amazing job, and I'm talking about both the band and Elusive Sound. They are all sold out now, as far as I know. This ver this this album is sold out. I think there might be some of the Glacier variant 2 available, but by the time this video comes out, it might be all gone. You have to be on their mailing list. You have to know when they drop their stuff because it's all quality. And you know, they're not paying me to say this. I'm just telling you right now that you need to listen to this stuff and be on it if you want to own these beautiful art pieces. And finally, the last two records I'm going to show you are really cool video game bootlegs. These are two games that were parts of my childhood and I wanted to get these lathe cuts because they were done really well for lathe cuts. Now, not the quietest lathes I've ever heard, but absolutely listenable and you're not really listening to video game music for absolute silence it's more for nostalgic purposes and the first record is sonic 2 soundtrack for genesis now this is a really nice jacket for a bootleg it has like a nice touch to it. its matte touch and it uh it has a, a pretty decent spine too it's not some kind of thin cheaped out release by any means um the art is crisp and vibrant and on the back i love that it has the track listing as it does the um the level select in the game 
really well done there. And uh, the disc itself, it's just a black lathe cut. Um, so it's nothing, you know, that exciting visually. But I think there were a couple clear lathe cuts slipped in, like randomly inserted. I did not get one, unfortunately, but those who did definitely are holding on to a treasure. Uh, so this was the first one, and the other one, Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past for a Super Nintendo. So again, same thing, really nice jacket. On the back you see this awesome sprite of Link, and uh, the track listing of pretty much everything in the game, musically, I believe. These soundtracks are iconic. Sonic, Zelda, these are soundtracks that should be getting real vinyl pressings, and they're not, so people are stepping up and making it themselves. Now, if they were to actually make these soundtracks and have them licensed from Sega and Nintendo, I would buy them in a heartbeat too. I'll double dip, that's fine. But there's no other way to do it, so some awesome people that absolutely love the music and they wanna provide love letters to fans are making these, and I'm really happy to be a part of them. Hope you guys had a spooky October. Let me know what you got in this month record-wise, what albums I did not listen to that you think I need to add to my list my ever-growing list that will never end. As always, leave a comment, please like this video, subscribe, and there's gonna be more videos soon. Take it easy, guys.